The 10-Minute Drill. This is a big one. It's brought to you by All Pro Roofing. All Pro Roofing LLC.com on 1010XL. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hit it. All right, Sports Concepts and Rationalizations. We do it each and every day. And at the end of the drill, 10-Minute Drill, Beef, what are we handing out today? I'm out of bounds. Uh, stay tuned. At the end of the 10-minute drill, one lucky Guggen going to go home with a pair of tickets to the Jacksonville Boat Show. That comes up Friday through Sunday at the Prime Osborne Center, so stay tuned for that. Uh, Gators played basketball last night, played uh, played tough, tried to hung around, shot the ball well for a half, and uh, built an eight-point lead. And it was a, you know, Tennessee just is better. And well, who knew that Jatoba Florida, got hurt? Yeah, and, Jason Jatoba. Who knew that losing Jason Jatoba would matter? But when Colin... Uh, Castleton is already out indefinitely. Florida losing its only big man while they were up eight or nine points in the yeah. first half. I'm I'm not positive this result wouldn't have been different if they weren't left with like a six seven center and Tennessee hit a ton of threes, man. Yeah, ton of threes. Yeah, I mean they every time I uh, you know every time you looked up somebody from Tennessee. Well, let me see what Tennessee was from th- eleven for twenty four. I mean they hit almost fifty percent from three. Yeah, and Florida ten for thirty three didn't shoot it. Tara, I just they're just not good enough. No, you know, enough. without those guys, without Castleton, their best yeah. player, they're 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 just not good enough. And, and you got you got you know it is what it is at this point. So, uh, but this season is uh, spiraling downhill quickly. Well, it's it? there's some urgency. Twelve they, and they, eight. They've got the Big Twelve Challenge coming up against right. Oklahoma this State weekend. this weekend. Yeah. Oklahoma State's not a great team. They're right. about five hundred. Um, and you know, they got to go to Missouri though. And you know, Missouri just play Auburn. Missouri's a lot like Florida because if you're sitting somewhere else, you see Florida in a lot of their games too. At the end of the day, I don't think there's a lot of difference, but I would say again, they've got another three pack coming up, Missouri, Ole Miss and Georgia. You better win them at home. You got to win all three. three. Yeah, you do. If you win. And by the way, if you do win all three, suddenly you're 16 and eight. If you beat Oklahoma state, suddenly you're six and five in the league. Yeah. And it wouldn't shock me if that's what Florida did. They have that kind of team. Yeah, I think they're going to hover around. You know, we you need nine and nine, eight and ten probably is. Yeah, you know, I you know I don't know. They need to because make, th- then they have this three pack. Yeah, Auburn, Kentucky, Texas A and M, and Auburn. Oh, yeah, yeah, they good got Kentucky luck. twice. Kentucky to close the year. Yeah, I mean Texas A and M, Mississippi, they're all the same. Ole Miss, Mississippi State, Texas A and M, Arkansas, uh, you know, Georgia, to yeah, a degree, they, Missouri, they, they, they're all the same. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't I don't no, I don't think they're going to a, do they, they to the and I don't believe do they I don't think they play Tennessee again no strangely yes so uh, twelve and eight now three and five <clears throat> swimming in the same pool with Florida I think it'll be there till the end it looked like they were headed in a complete different direction but the Knowles that's a bad loss for FSU last night they'd won six and six straight you know trying to establish themselves firmly as a tournament team because they're down there in that. You know, first four out, last four in bubble, whatever you want to call the bracketologists these yeah. days. You know, they're down there with Florida in that same that same area. And the problem is George Tech is, the, you know, they're in the basement in the ACC. They seem to – don't they usually play yeah. tough? Yeah, they've, they've beaten FSU in some years where yeah. they weren't good at all. Did you see the way Miami won? Uh, no. Oh, my God. Dude. At the buzzer, though, right? Like a half quarter. Yeah, it was half quarter. Oh, really? Yeah. From the logo. <laughs> I think it, I, now, I do think it was one of those minimal pressure tie game when he made the shot. I think if you're down and you make the shot much more kudos than I think pretty sure it was a tie, but you know, he had a legitimate half quarter. Yeah. And so Miami has been, you know, one of the real success for the stories. record. FSU is in much better shape than Florida though. Tournament wise. Well, what's I'm record? surprised. They're what's, only la- what's are their, you sure their last four? What's their, I'm just saying that's 13 where, and six and six and three. Yeah. Six and three is probably six wins them. in a row, and the, the top last of the time I, in fairness, last time I looked at bracketology, yeah. they were the same. Okay, I think they're they probably, were ten. Like one I think they're in now. Ten, one was nine, and they might stay there. But losing to Georgia Tech is surprising enough that it's not guaranteed. I guess my point yeah. because if you lose to Georgia Tech, you could lose to Virginia Tech this weekend. Yeah. That's who Miami beat last night, yeah. by the way. So, yeah. Um, I think it. Uh, yeah, to your point, uh, that six game win streak. I might be still stuck in the middle of that when it comes to the right. most recent ranking. Right. But nonetheless, for a team trying to guarantee it, that was a win that you thought you'd get last night. Yeah. If you're FSU. I saw something weird last night. You um, did? Yeah. Uh, basketball. Uh, help me out here. Yeah. Charlotte scored like 158 points. Season high, 158. Franchise record and season high for the league. Oh, okay. That's the most in the league this year. Because I know they're scoring more points, but I was yeah, like, that's, that's a season high for the league this year. Good gracious, man. That's a lot of points. 158. Yeah, buck 58. Led by the legendary Kelly Oubre uh, with 39. To, yeah. to my point, though, 
Uh-huh. The most recent net rankings, mm-hmm. which was, I don't know, whatever, done by the NCAA, Florida 45, FSU 56. Yeah. So they're not in, you know, they're in the same boat, even yeah. though FSU's record is better. But um, not that I agree with that per se. Yeah. yeah. Anywho, that's a different Florida team. Had different personnel when they played early in the year, and FSU took a while to get going. And mm-hmm. uh, Yeah, but yeah, but to, to your point in the NBA, how about that, 158, huh? Oh, I have the Florida stat, though, that will shazam you. Okay. You know, and this is why Mike White's team, it's hard to believe they will get on any kind of consistent run and why – you know, the, I think the best hope for this year is to get on the right side of the bubble and make it into the tournament again and try and keep that streak alive. Uh, when it comes to shooting the ball from three-point distance, Dan, mm-hmm. there are 350 Division One basketball <laughs> teams and Florida's 325. I ain't going to win a lot yeah, of games. you're 325 out of 350 game. We're talking like bottom five, you know, 2% um, in all of college basketball. And so that continues to dog um, the Gators so far this year. And... I don't know if it's going to get better. It's it's somewhat surprising because, you know, we've talked about this on the show. The kid they got from Penn State, you know, you would say attaboy in recruiting. He's supposed to be a really, really yeah. good three-point shooter, and he's not played that way. So, um, Florida, again, the Big 12 challenge this weekend. Some good college basketball involving the SEC and the Big 12. The good matchups are like, you know, Kansas, Kentucky, and, you know, Auburn, Baylor, and those kinds, but there's some good ones. But those are the only two big guys they have, and they're both hurt, and they it showed. Oh, yeah, for sure. For but sure. I can't, by the way, accept your ultimate criticism and negative mark against Mike White when the text says the fact the Gators only have two true big men is ridiculous and should be another negative mark against Mike White. Mike White. If you spelled ridiculous, R-E-D-I-C, I can't, I can't accept the, okay. the, the criticism. You can't do it. Yeah, you can't. Throwing it out. You can't call someone ridiculous and spell it R-E-D. Yeah. I'm right? Am I wrong? That's fair. Is that fair? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the big news this morning is Nathaniel Hackett, first time as a head coach. Broncos' uh, fourth different coach since the start of 2016, which is odd. The Broncos the Broncos had some crazy stats, like never having a losing season back-to-back for a while. And that's a proud franchise that has fallen on, um, fallen on hard times for sure. And Vic Fangio, uh, five straight losing seasons for Denver. A part of it is you're in the division with the Chiefs, but I don't, there's no excuse for being the loser five years in a row. No, there's not. The NFL is too easy. You can only rely on excuses yeah. and re. He was with Denver for five seasons. Vic Fangio, is that what you just told me? Uh, no, the team has had five. Oh. Straight, I think Vic got three years. Yeah, I was gonna say I didn't think he'd been there that long. I was that. Yeah, took me back just a little bit. Denver's a proud franchise, man. That's, I know, that's, that's, that's what I'm bad. Saying. You know, what they're doing out there is as distasteful to them as the what biggest we're doing Denver here. goof, the one that should haunt Denver more than anything. Letting Tim Tebow go. No. Well, we know that. <laughs> Passing on Josh Allen for Bradley Chubb. Yeah. Oof. That was a big. But then again, you don't know if Josh Allen mistake. becomes Josh Allen without Brian Dable and the Bills. Maybe he does. You'd like to think the talent takes would. over. Yeah. And you got, I mean, fascinating to see what John happens. John Elway Trev- is. Yeah, was is a yeah. is a nineteen nineties version similar. of Josh Allen. Very similar, tremendous athlete. Big now, oh, always not near what, as big. What a what a fascinating amount of pressure on the future of the franchise in Trevor Lawrence's second year. I, I you know, twenty touchdowns, eighteen picks ain't gonna get, ain't gonna keep fuel in the fire of optimism and ceilings. We need a. Josh Allen was expected to have to grow into being a great player. Mm-hmm. Trevor Lawrence was expected to be a lot more ready-made than we saw in year one. So there's some serious statistical result-driven pressure on Trevor this well, year. Well, they got to get – yeah, then they better, I get agree. Him, they better get him some damn help. I understand. I mean, I, I just, it, can't, it can't be much worse than it was. Yeah. Well, you know, you know the, most teams I mean, have worth, average it, help. I, I, I swear. Oh, no need to get that way. What's wrong? I if if the Jaguars next year are throwing to Dude. Isaac Smolko or <laughs> Greg Estandia. Well, it's interesting. Or Alan Reisner. Okay. Or Niles Paul or Clay Harbor. You're giving me tight or, ends. No, I'm giving you Jaguars. What about so, Zach Potter? What about Dan Arnold? Dan Arnold. You don't, you don't want to keep Dan Arnold? Uh, sure, I'll keep yeah. him. I'll keep him, but that's it. That's if it. we're thrown to those yeah, guys, yeah. I'm I'm going to put uh, my uh, head through you were a too play kind. class window. You were too kind. I've got some bigger, more popular names that I would include on the, that list. But. Julius Thomas. 
Now you're going, wait, I don't know what you're doing. Now I'm you're naming all over the Jaguar place tight ends. In history. Well, then I asked her, are you naming tight ends? And you said, no, you're just naming Jaguars. No, you said you're naming tight. Oh, I thought you said you're naming Titan tight ends. No, 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 no. Tight ends. Yeah, no. all Jaguar tight ends. Yeah, correct. Yeah. You know who they are. Well, we got Dan Arnold now. No, we don't have any of those other guys, so we'll be fine. He's the guy who caught the touchdown pass in the, against yes. Buffalo. Uh, yeah, Ben Koyak. Benny Koyak. Yeah, pride in Notre Dame. If we can't get a freaking tight end. <sighs> Doc Kevin just, Murphy is next. I just it's Julius Thomas two, is seriously. available, Dan. I have listen. You know what I have though? It's as fate would have it. Play glass window. After we do Doc and we come back in the eight o'clock hour, I uh, ESPN has just unveiled its uh, first list top fifty free agents. Let's get let's build them back then. Doggone it! Let's, let's have do some it. fun. Let's they give don't you listen all. To us, let's give you all fifty. Let's, Super six. Let's give you all the exciting names that the Jaguars will ignore and then bombard you with free agent number forty four and fifty seven. This is the drill. On 10 10 XL. Hey, I need a number. Three. Three. From downtown. Call number three right now, 641 1010. Gonna go home with a pair of tickets to the Jacksonville Boat Show that starts tomorrow through Sunday at the Prime Osborne Convention Center. Just be calling number three right now at 641 1010.